Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about DRESS syndrome, that is, drug rash with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. So, here it is a drug rash, drug induced skin lesion, and patient also can have eosinophilia. DRESS syndrome is a syndrome where patient develops severe idiosyncratic reaction that is not dose dependent reaction to a drug by a prolonged latency period that means patient develops reaction to a drug it is not dose dependent anytime patient can develop this problem but it is not like other drug reactions normally what we see in drug reaction immediately after taking the drug next day or uh, third day patient develops reaction to that drug here there is a prolonged latency period that's why this syndrome is distinct from other types of drug reactions. Normally, patient can have skin rashes, fever, lymphadenopathy, and eosinophilia. That is very, very classical. Patient can have a fever, rash, and lymphadenopathy. You, can, uh, you, you might have seen a lot of patients who is having infectious uh, diseases, like including infectious mononucleosis, HIV, any, many viral infections. Patient can have fever, rash, and lymphadenopathy. Here, patient develops high degree eosinophilia and different types of uh, systemic disorders, that is dress syndrome. It is a type of hypersensitivity reaction, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction and it is mediated by T cells. There is a latency period of 2 to 8 weeks after interaction of the triggering drug, that is a problem here. So normally when we see drug, re, uh, uh, drug reactions in a patient, we see it routinely the second day or third day itself. So that we will know that which drug is producing rashes. Here the problem is in dress syndrome, it will be very difficult to identify the drug because there is a prolonged latency period. So that is 2 to 8 weeks. Rarely patient can have life threatening uh, dress syndromes, patient can have high mortality in that type of cases. Now, most of the drug reactions, what we can see in uh, uh, in your patient who is having drug uh, sensitivity, they have mucosal involvement. Oral cavity involvement is very very common in drug induced rashes. That's how we differentiate with many viral fever induced exanthematous fevers to a drug reaction. Normally, drug reactions appear all over the skin and oral mucosa is classically involved even palms are also involved in drug re drug rashes skin detachment is not commonly seen in drug uh, reactions but uh, in a severe drug reaction you can see after the recovery patient uh, develops skin detachments but in uh, steven johnson syndrome and 10 and all patient can have skin detachment very early itself Cutaneous manifestations are articarial, maculopapular ra rashes, eruptions. Uh, in some patients, uh, vesicles, bullae, pustules, purpura, target lesions, facial edema, chelitis, erythroderma, all can be there. Now, patient can also have hepatitis, pneumonitis, myocarditis, pericarditis, nephritis, colitis, all these major findings also can be seen. Some cases are associated with blood cell abnormalities. You can see leukocytosis and eosinophilia in 90% of the cases, mononucleosis in 40% of the cases. Now you can see here the picture patient can have generalized red rashes, oral mucosa is involved, palms and soles of the patients are also involved. Palm involvement and sole involvement, mucosal involvement is very, very classically seen in drug induced rashes. Whereas uh, viral exanthematous fever, normally they may not involve the uh, palm and uh, uh, mouth. But in hand, foot, mouth diseases, that's a viral disease, there also you can get this type of lesions. But uh, uh, their patient can have uh, viral fever induced symptoms. But it will be diff very difficult to identify this type of rashes in uh, emergency settings because many a times patient may not tell about the drug history only because patient might have started this drug uh, long time back. 
mostly we can get a trigger that the patient is taking some drug but uh, it will be difficult to find out which drug patient because many of our patients are taking large number of medications so from that medication history uh, we will not be able to uh, uh, clear out what is a exact drug which is producing uh, this problem but uh, we have some high risk drugs like allopurinol carbamazepine phenytoin lamotrigine uh, carbamazepine phenobarbital sulfonamides uh, vancomycin minocycline nevirapine rifampicin ethambutol isoniazid pyrocinamide they are all anti tubercular drugs so these are high risk drugs so if the, any of these patients uh, any of the drugs are uh, creating in patients who is having uh, uh, any major diseases uh, you can attribute uh, dress syndrome to these drugs especially allopurinol is very very notorious because allopurinol alone or allopurinol with some uh, penicillins amoxicillin can have drug interactions and produce all uh, skin complications now risk drugs are penicillins nsaids olanzapine fluoxetine uh, some other anti cancer drugs uh, omeprazole anti viral drugs like, like raltegravir all these things also can rarely produce uh, dress syndrome Now you can see the diagnostic criteria 7 out of 10 should be positive maculopapular rash developing more than 3 weeks after starting the suspected drug prolonged clinical symptoms 2 weeks after the discontinuation of the suspected drug that is very very important even after discontinuation of the drug the patient can have symptoms fever more than 38 degrees celsius liver abnormalities like uh, stot stbt may elevate more than 100 units per liter elevated wbc counts more than 11000 atypical lymphocytosis more than 5% eosinophil count is very high lymphadenopathy can be there in many patients especially cervical lymph node groups are involved human herpes 6 reactivation can occur in many patients so out of this 10 criteria if 7 are positive then uh, dress can be diagnosed you know that Her, human herpes 6 reactivation uh, it is very difficult to test in our settings so uh, how you can just think about out of 9 7 positive now another registrar inclusion criteria for potential ca- cases it, it requires only three of the following hospitalization due to drug rashes reactivated to drug related skin lesions reaction uh, suspected to uh, skin a uh, uh, drug acute skin rashes occurring in a patient who is previously uh, never had history of drug rashes fever and large lymph nodes at two sites involvement of at least one internal organ like liver is involved kidney is involved blood counts abnormalities like low platelets raised eosinophils abnormal lymphocyte count all these things we have discussed in the previous slide but here according to this criteria only 3 are enough to make a diagnosis of drug uh, dress syndrome hematological abnormalities we have seen 85 to 90% patients can have high eosinophil count leukocytosis 95% neutrophilia 78% lymphocytosis 25 to 52% monocytosis 69% atypical lymphocytes 35 to 67% so eosinophil count elevation is very very classical in dress syndrome now liver can be involved in 53 to 90% kidney can be involved in uh, many patients uh, like 10 to 30% of dress cases pulmonary involvement can be there in up to 30% so uh, liver enzymes can be elevated creatinine can be elevated proteinuria can be there pulmonary infiltrates can be there in that kidney involvement is very very important because uh, drug induced kidney uh, failure or acute interstitial nephritis you can even see urine uh, uh, um, eosinophils eosinophil eosinophil urea is a uh, classical finding for acute renal failure induced by acute interstitial nephritis nephritis produced by drug so other than direct dress induced kidney damage 
the drug sometimes can uh, produce only drug induced acute interstitial nephritis in that eosinophil urea is a classical finding so eosinophils can be present in uh, kidney uh, during acute attacks now cardiac involvement can be there patient can have hypotension tachycardia dyspnea left ventricular failure all these things can be associated with uh, drug induced myocarditis or pericarditis or conduction defects now differential diagnosis are steven johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis both these conditions the reaction occurs acutely not like uh, dress syndrome it has got a prolonged latency period another important disease is stills disease adult onset stills disease here also patient can have rashes along with fever but what we have to understand is here rashes occurring only during episodes of fever so once the fever once the fever subsides the rashes disappears so that is a differential diagnosis and many other viral infections also can have uh, dress like features another important disease is infectious mononucleosis in infectious mononucleosis we know that we if we treat the patient with amoxicillin patient develops severe skin rashes that is not a drug induced rash it is a uh, it's a diagnostic test you can uh, you suppose you uh, uh, without knowing that it is infectious mononucleosis if you give amoxicillin or amoxicillin containing drugs patient develops skin rashes once you see that skin rashes you have to make you have to understand that this is infectious mononucleosis uh, patient is not allergic to penicillin that is very very important many a times patient will be branded as penicillin allergic uh, uh, in infectious mononucleosis so these are the differential diagnosis but uh, however steven johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis is the classical differential diagnosis now to manage dress syndrome it is all supportive therapy like uh, patient will have severe skin lesions they may have to give anti allergic medications uh, soothing skin soothing agents all su supportive medications should be given they also require fluid replacement therapy albumin replacement therapy all these things they are all supportive therapy systemic steroids are the main uh, treatment for dress syndrome systemic steroids like you can chart on uh, middle prednisone around 1 to 2 mg per kg body weight acutely you can give prednisone around 1 to 2 mg can be started then slowly taper down over a period of uh, 10 or 12 weeks because this type of patients uh, require long term therapy so uh, within uh, one or two days this may not subside and because of the latency even after stopping patient can have lesions so some of the patients require long term therapy but most of the patients mm, require only short term therapy but however when we taper down the drug we can see if the drug eruptions are coming back we have to continue the treatment for a long time otherwise most of the patient require or only one or two weeks cyclosporin is an alternative or second line drug for dress syndrome it's a immunosuppressant or steroid sparing agent oral cyclosporin at a dose of 3 to 5 mg per kg body weight divided in bd dosages for 7 days and you can taper the dose 7 to 14 days if the patient does not improve or if the patient is having uh, prolonged uh, 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 symptoms then only you have to continue for longer time otherwise we can taper it fast like steroids here also if the patient improves very fast we can taper it fast if the patient does not improve fast then we have to taper slowly so we have discussed about one of the most uh, uh, important dermatological emergency that is dress syndrome we have in previous classes we have discussed about uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis and steven johnson syndrome it's a part of skin induced uh, diseases Uh, sorry drug induced diseases on skin here patient uh, develops skin rashes and eosinophilia uh, main treatment is steroids cyclosporin is an alternative drug thank you